back to our studios this morning as we look to introduce our next guest with our eyes set on discussing the local government autonomy situation as local government elections unfold in nigeria and the call for the third year of government to be functional for sustainability in governance we're now joined by the president of the apc igg ambassador musa mohammed Sokin. ambassador good morning to you good morning and thank you for having me now, Ambassador, as we look to discuss this issue following the Supreme Court ruling granting local government autonomies, we've seen a first hand of elections in some states. But the challenge is, again, with the acceptance for the outcome of the local government elections. There continue to be debates about how much of the ruling party in states have influence over the outcome of these elections, while others are debating on who should conduct the local government elections. Should it be INEC at the federal level or the state independent electoral commissions let's get your thoughts on this well it must have to start where it stopped because it is a kind of a process that uh, started somewhere so in that case it must have to continue with the uh, the state government organizing it pending when the federal government will now come into it and establish a particular, uh, you know, uh, organized body that is going to take care of the election in the local government level within the state. So um, after then, you know, there are several other elections that will come, but the structures of the federal, you know, electioneering to conduct local government elections are not yet put in place. So what is on the ground is that structure of the states conducting that election. So if we are saying that uh, we should wait for federal government to come out with a structure that will be responsible for conducting local government election, some of the local government election will not hold well, well ambassador we will still uh, come back to you to get more takes <coughs> on this particular issue but we are now being joined virtually by barrister ahmed tanimo who is a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst hello and good morning barrister Well, it's wonderful to have you join us on Morning Express this morning. Uh, we are discussing local government autonomy and uh, ways to better uh, give the top tier of government the freedom it deserves in order to give local government residents or people at the grassroots the dividends of democracy. Now, uh, with the situation of the country, the political state of the country, most people feel like the top tier of the government is being grabbed uh, rather strongly by the state governors and in turn it is not allowing them do their due diligence as they are supposed to do do you also share the same thoughts as many nigerians absolutely and the issue is when the supreme court judgment was being celebrated a lot of us were taken aback because we know what has happened is that the cart was placed before the horse all the local government chairmen are under the beck and call of the governors. They are appointed, they are not elected. Even after the judgment, we saw some certain states, which I don't want to mention, elections were conducted, 99.9% .9 were returned. So it means it's just a charade, and up to now we are not serious about granting local government autonomy. If we are serious about it, as we are making, uh, approaching the judiciary, which ordinarily shouldn't have been about the judiciary, we have legislatures, they are the people starting with the responsibility of making laws. They ought to make laws that will reflect the co uh, complete yearning and aspirations of all Nigerians. All Nigerians have agreed that local government needs to have autonomy. If you look at 1999, where we have a semblance of local government autonomy, most of those local governments worked actually until when the, law, the various state government decide to put them in their pocket because we all know what um, joint account, what how it operates, where you have a situation where governors uh, will now uh, receive allocation from the federation on behalf of the local government and they disburse such funds. We have commissioners of local government and chieftaincy affairs across 
the various states. They are the ones that are actually overseeing what happens in the local government. I have friends that are local government chairman and I do discuss with them. And they tell me that um, at most, they don't even actually control more than 10 million in a month. You can see the humongous amount of money that are being allocated. All those monies will be now be spent based on the instructions of the Ministry of Local Government Chairman. Already, as we have it, the, the, a lot of those local governments are indebted, so-called, because the state government have already taken humongous both uh, local and foreign debts on their behalf with nothing to show for it. So if the federal government is serious about um, the local government autonomy, what should be done is, as my other co-analyst um, stated, is that for now, if you go by what we have in our laws and the constitution, state electoral commissions are the ones serving with the responsibility of conducting such election. A lot of them across the various states, they are comatose, they are underfunded, they lack the capacity, they lack the independence of conducting any election. All the elections that they've conducted over the years have returned with the same result. 99.9% uh, of the party in power will always return as victorious. So the government need to do more. A body or INEC should be saddled with the responsibility for those complaining that INEC should not conduct local government election. But we have federal House of Rep members, senators from various states, and it's INEC that is conducting the election. Of what difference will it make if we have a fixed date, just as the way we have the regular election, the tenure of the local government chairman should be fixed, the electioneering date should equally be fixed to be the same with the election of the other national office. You should give local government the power it deserves. But with the way it's being done at the moment, I don't think anything meaningful will come out of it. The charade will continue. They will continue to organize sham elections. They will return their cronies and proceeds. And the resistance to that autonomy will continue. Barrister, you have established that uh, these state governors you know, have their hands tightly on the necks of local government chairmen in the Absolutely. state. And, and I'll give you an example of a state like Adamawa where there is very little to no opposition at all across the state. It's all PDP from top to bottom. Uh, in, in a situation like this, how do we create a balanced space where you have uh, local government chairmen who are not really uh, part of the ruling uh, party in the state but will be allowed to operate in their capacity as chairman and and get the allocations that is due them and operate in the way that they are supposed to do in their office i agree with you what has transpired in adamawa and what happened in adama is a reflection of what happened across board all the local government chairmen are in the pockets of their various states government for you to have independence, I assure you there are opposition on the ground and ordinarily no state, a no government in power will ordinarily have more than 50% of uh, returned elected officials if elections are to be conducted in a free and fair manner. If you look at local government elections are the closest to the people. People know the people that will represent them, that will, that will, that will not um, uh, disappoint them. But they are not given the opportunity. In some climb, we've seen in some states where the way they made the contest to be completely out of the reach of the common man, as you see that electioneering form, uh, nomination form is going as high as 10 million for a local government chairman, and you want good governance? Are we monetizing the whole process? What we are saying is that you cannot have a functional local government chairman if the election electionary process is not credible is not transparent is not independent and for you to guarantee the independence of the electionary process all the states uh, electionary commission they cannot conduct a free and fair election because they lack the independence they lack the resources they lack the know-how for all the years they've been conducting the result have been the same regardless of the fact that a lot of the people on ground are not in tune with what is happening. More can be done if the federal government, in as much as we are trying to make amends, we need to amend the constitution. Let a local government be a complete chair of government, not only by name in terms of mentioning 
you have a Chiosa local government, you have um, Kaduna North local government, you have Kaduna South local No, we want the tenure of local government to be stipulated. If it is four years, let it be four years. We want the election to be conducted with the general elections. And we want INEC or a new body responsible at the federal level. If you leave the affairs, we've seen how the states have managed the local government and they have failed. So we don't want the state government to now be the same people that will determine the way and manner election into local government will be conducted. If that is done, I assure you, we'll begin to see a semblance of functional government at the local government level. Now, Barrister Ahmed, let's speak your thoughts on this new constitution you speak about. Because earlier on in our review of newspapers this morning, we saw some sort of disagreements between northern and southern ed elders. Whilst the Iowa Consultative Forum and Pandev are looking for an amended of amendment of this already amended constitutions, we see the Ohanese and Afenifere quite outrightly calling for a new constitution. It may seem as though different regions of the country want different things. How do Nigerians find a common ground to get local government autonomy working through this new constitution that you seem to be advocating for? Okay. If you look at it, constitutional amendment process has always come with its um, fun and fair and its lot of criticism. But if you look at in all the constitutional amendment process, there are certain aspects of the constitution that both the North and the South, they are in agreement in a tandem with nobody is disagreeing. Nobody is agreeing that local government should not have autonomy and majority equally are clamoring for an independent body to be able to conduct the election. So for me, what I believe in is that we should itemize those things that we are we all agree on. And for those things that we don't agree on, then we should equally put it to vote and then um, put it to more deliberations. For constitution, uh, the approach by the Ohanese and the people from the South, we, we appreciate what they are doing, that they want a new constitution. But you see, you can only achieve that when you now have a functional system for now the procedure for amending the constitution is clear and is contained in the constitution rather for them calling for a new constitution i would have advocated that the procedure should be the first thing that should be amended we don't have issue of um, we don't have a um, referendum in our constitution uh, like what obtains in other climb this is the right time as a form of amendment that there should be a clause whereby referendum should be included in our constitution. Then on major issues like that affect the constitution should be done via referendum where every Nigerian will be asked to vote yes or no on a particular issue. So issues of uh, local government autonomy, immunity for governors, uh, so many other burning issues will be itemized. And based on the outcome of the referendum, they will now have a final position on the Kosovo. But as we have it today, what the organizers are demanding is practically impossible. You don't clamor for a new constitution where those that will make the amendment are being brought in by the same process. What is practicable is we will make amendment that will give room to what they desire. We all want um, new things and we all believe that with new ideas, this country can be moved forward. But let's look at it in the practical context. Are these things, are they achievable? Can you, in all honesty, formulate a new constitution? How will you implement it? How will you enforce it? But me, I'm saying that we can do it in a gradual and in a realistic process. Let's start by amending those burning issues. Local government autonomy, resource control, issue of um, electioneering into local government council, issue of having a clause in the constitution that talks about referendum whereby burning issues will not be left to the national assembly alone will not be left to the various state houses of assembly alone but will be left to the generality of all nigerians whereby a free and fair election will be conducted in form of referendum and we all say yes or nay to certain burning issues that will in a long way allow for the constitution because cons constitution in itself are all laws generally are meant for the people it's not the people for the law so amendment to the constitution amendment to all our laws should be a routine exercise That's i'm nice. surprised 
politicians are not talking about amending the electoral act uh -huh. one year has passed we all saw what happened in the previous election we all wait until when it is a month or a year before they start clamoring for election uh, amendment of the electoral act it's the same challenge that we are having with the constitution we all what we are clamoring now are things that ought to have been done long ago all the conferences all the amendments made there are beautiful uh, positions taken and all parties were in agreement to it and yet nothing was done about it but if the not too young bill can find its way into the constitution if all those amendments that we have noticed and alteration to the constitution there's nothing stopping the local government autonomy from having the same fate very salient points you've raised by mr ahmed we'll come back to you in a bit but let's come back into the studio now and find out from ambassador musa mohammed you are the president apc initiative for good governance he has talked about some of the reforms that we need at an institutional level even in amending the constitution inclusivity through the inclusion of a referendum but another challenge that remains quite largely unspoken for is how to achieve competency in who emerges as a local government chairman and the loyalty factor in terms of the godfatherism we see playing a hand in what the governors do in installing caretaker committees and caretaker chairmen in local government councils. How do we balance this discussion, Ambassador? Well, actually, there was a lacuna in the uh, arena of the political system in the state level. That gives room for governors to manipulate and uh, uh, maneuver all the uh, chairmen of the local government to their own credit. And um, that is done just because there is no any formulation of a body from the national uh you know uh, federal government to regulate and also oversee the election in the uh, uh local government level so uh nigeria is very swift and very good in formulating policies and they are very very quick in doing that but what i will either suggest is that the the, the 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 national assembly too should do something very fast because shortly so local government election will be conducted for the fear of what was happening in the past should it repeat itself they should set up with immediate effect a body that will regulate this local government and oversee it monitor it and ensure that the right people are voted into the system if that is done, we are going to get it right. But as it is now, I know in no distant time, some local um, some state will conduct local government elections. Some have even gone to conduct their primaries already, ready for the election. Yes. So we are very good, Nigeria, we are very good in formulating policies. And the only best thing to do, if we want that system to overrule or overhaul the system, is to a, a kind of uh, implement uh, formulate policy that is going to guide the election of uh, 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 local government chairmen and councillors so that it will reflect national interest. It shouldn't be just as a state level and uh, that is all. No, there should be a federal uh, government, you know, presence. That is going to oversee, monitor, and ensure that the, 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 the election goes very much credible to reflect the interests of the common man. Now, now still staying with the issue of Godfatherism, <coughs> let's uh, take the case, the <coughs> issue of uh, the Saga in River State, for instance, uh, with the former governor and the current governor, Simfubara. Uh, now, this is a sitting governor who has been under pressure for a very long time by someone who is considered in quote a godfather to him now if a governor could go through such fire how much more local government chairmen in the state who are at the mercy of these state governors considering the fact that a lot of state governors are kicking hard against granting local governments uh, the, the autonomy that has already been, been been passed into law what does this mean for one the federal government and secondly on the part of governors who are hitting back on on the local government autonomy 
credibility is very very integral in governance and uh, what is credibility uh, credibility in governance it means uh, a kind of equitable distribution of uh, uh, resources that is you know uh, in, the, in the the hands of either the local government chairman the 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 the, 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 the governor or what have you yes so uh, taking taking that into consideration um the issue of loyalty is another thing that uh let me quote uh, abraham lincoln abraham lincoln said uh loyalty must is, must not be a uh, passive and complacent but loyalty must be active and uh, in that regard it must be critical yes so these are very critical issues for one to have someone that is, uh, is, is, is loyal to him, it means there is a lot of work to be done because how are you going to, what periscope are you going to use to determine that? You have just cited the case of uh, River State. Uh, there are several other cases all over the country where the issue of this Godfatherism, it comes because someone wants to come to a, a, a system that it has no uh you know bearing in that system and that system is in existence so it means he's coming to meet up with the system so there are people there and those people have a leader and that leader is the one that is going to lead those people to give a, a surmounted support in order to ensure that that particular person wins election yes. let me cite the uh, example of uh uh ben wasted his Excellency Senator Dr. George Akume is known as a, as a figure in the political arena of not only North Central, but Nigeria as a whole. Having, uh, you know, uh, gone through several positions, elected position and appointed positions. So for that, he has a grip, powerful grip among his people. So let me be, to be precise, his Excellency, with all due respect to his personality and office and all that uh, he has, His Excellency uh, Governor Alia, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation has been so instrumental and he does everything within the tenets of the law and with the capacity of his experience as a politician. He strives by all means using all his uh, you know uh, cabinet or let me see say his lieutenants to ensure that alia win that election but to our let me say to my own dismay or to my own surprise at the end of the day immediately he won the election there is litigation then after the litigation that you know brought in and give it the power to, uh, you know, to assume to, office. To assume office yes. He now started fighting uh, those people that are, that work for him against the people that fought against him. So you see, when, sometimes when people talk about Godfatherism in politics, um, yes, actually, it's something to be to take a proper look at it, an in-depth look at what is even godfatherism yes ordinarily when you say godfatherism people will be looking at it from different angles but let's keep the, that word godfatherism aside there is a leader who work to ensure that you come on board as a governor as a chairman or whatsoever and he has his own disciples that work along with him to ensure that that office is being given to you through the ballot so he has his own policies and programs that is meant for the betterment of those people that supported you and bring you on board but if at the end of the day you choose to fight people that work for you eh, against the people that but, but, but you know, when when you say when you say policies by these godfathers who sort of worked in collaboration with other stakeholders to bring these governors into power what 
uh, policies of interest do you think perhaps for instance the the river state governor now what policies of interest do you think the fct minister probably has in river states that is causing this huge scuffle between him and the current governor which is in turn affecting residents of the state because as they say when two elephants fight the grass or the ants suffer you you know in in most cases in politics yes. in most cases in politics you expect that people that work for someone that particular people should be given a seat of power in that government yes so when that is uh, something contrary to that happens and these people that are going to work for you they are answerable to some people so when you now come into power it was the workforce of that leader and his people that bring you on board so you must answer to them yes of course because they work for you L you must have to consider them because they have their own principles and philosophy of bringing you on board in the interest of the people in the interest well. of the people now let's also see if Not we can get, get back to barrister ahmed who is also online and still a very much a part of this conversation mm -hmm. uh barrister ahmed if you're following us it's on the issue of loyalty versus competence while ambassador musa mohammed has looked to make a case as to how your emergence as a political office holder does require some level of loyalty to the lieutenants that brought you into power the interest of the people still finds a harsh reality when it comes to the issue of competence and loyalty in delivering the dividends of democracy. Let's get your thoughts on this. For me, I believe um, loyalty and competence, they are uh, things that um, are important in any, in any political setting. You need the godfather, so to say, but it should not go against the wish and the yearnings of the people. And we've all known that most godfathers, they try to tie their patronage in terms of what they can get financially from the structure. So for me, I don't believe that um, uh, we should have uh, politicians and administrators that will be blindly loyal to their godfathers. But in as much as um, we want to not to deny reality if you are seeking for power we know you cannot get power on based on your competency alone you need people you need support i believe when at that point of looking for power you should be able to negotiate well and you should be able to keep to the terms and um, condition of the negotiation that you've had what we have and what we are witnessing you have situation where people everybody wants to become um, godfather the moment they are able to assume power, they want to dismantle the structures that put them in power. I don't think that is a very good thing to do. But uh, in the other hand, when you look at it, the godfathers tend to be over or domineering on the elected officials. They will not even allow them to run the affairs of the administration. That you look at it from when you look at just take a typical local government in almost all the states. The governor determines everything that happens in a local government. I tell you, I have friends that are local government chairmen, and they tell you that they cannot do anything. Practically everything has already been itemized for them. The governor, the commissioner of local government and chieftaincy affairs, they will bring in budgetary uh, proposal, who to pay, who everything is done by the people that the person that were not elected to man that office. And that is why you see it, uh, several times they've taken this proposal beforehand to the state houses of assembly. They will reject uh, amendment that has to do with local government autonomy. They don't want it because that is what they've been directed to do. What, 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 so what, what, Barista Ahmed, Ahmed, isn't this the reason why we need to demystify godfatherism in the nigerian political space let people contest for elections without the necessary support of these le le lieutenants uh, as rightly mentioned by beto here let them contest for election let the people's will be done when they come into power let whatever decisions that they are going to take sh be in the interest of the people who elected them not the people who lobbied them into power don't you think that is where we should be driving towards absolutely i agree with you a hundred and one percent and the question that 
comes to mind is do we still do we really have free and fair elections the ingredients and the conditions for having free ele free and fair elections are largely not um, visible and that should be the focal point of our legislature at the moment at the federal level our electoral act needs to be amended issue of beavers issue of the INEC guideline issue of um, transmission of um, election result issue of real-time online uh, capturing and reflecting of election results all issues and ingredients all proposal of the waste committee at this point our national assembly member should make it as part and parcel of the electoral act they should not wait until a year to election before they start making amendment we should be talking about election amendment if credible elections are allowed to be conducted godfathers will have no say in who becomes a governor or, or an elected and um, local government chairman and our focus has not even the media and activists and commentators people tend not to be focusing on putting the cart before the horse rather is the other way around we need to put the horse before the car we need to ensure and guarantee free and fair election at all levels and this can be done we need to amend the electoral act as we are talking about uh, constitutional amendment i think credible persons should be allowed to man i neck i neck chairman should not be at the uh, back and call at the whims and caprices of the president independent highly people of high integrity should be allowed to be the INEC chairman and INEC commissioner, party loyalists, party card carrying members should not have any say in INEC. Then there should be uh, proper conduct of election, transmission of results, real time, on time. We should not have room for manipulation. And these are done through the laws that have been implemented. Unfortunately, the judiciary, most times their hands are tied. As uh, judiciary, we can only interpret what the national assembly member or what is contained in the constitution we don't or we shouldn't always expect judges to be formulating laws not their oh. back and call we only interpret what has been clearly mentioned and stated in our various gamuts of law oh, so why right. not we all right the laws to the i'm afraid time is not really on our side but i must thank you very much for finding the time to join us on the program virtually and share your, share your thoughts and deep wealth of knowledge with us on this particular topic. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, coming back uh, to the studio to you, Ambassador, now, uh, he, he mentioned something about, uh, you know, the Electoral Act being amended, means of voting, beavers and all that. Uh, th there's a report in the news this morning that uh, the National Assembly is set to move or is moving to pass a bill ahead of the 2027 polls, which would allow people, Nigerians in diaspora, to be able to vote. Firstly, let me get your reaction to this. It's been an age-long call, and somehow it seems like there's light at the end of the tunnel for the diaspora uh, uh, voters to be able to vote wherever they are in the, in, in the world. Well, that could have been a very credible, uh, you know, chain of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, everybody's vote counts. As far as you are Nigeria, wherever you are, you should be as able to, uh, you know, uh, express your, uh, you know, uh, uh, franchise uh, wherever you are. I think if that uh, mandate is given, it will go a long way to give people privilege, uh, privileges to vote wherever they are. Uh, that is the advantage of uh, t uh, technology and innovation. Uh, if technology and innovation will be implemented into whichever system, uh, it makes you work and work very well. But one other thing that uh, I am looking at from what Barista says, which I think uh, for now it will be very virtually be impossible. But I'm, I believe in the fact that uh, Credible, credible people should be put in the places of, uh, you know, uh, leadership. And uh, in, the, in politics, you must have to study the terrain. I am now 31 years in politics. So I know the regiments of political arena in the country. So, but 
some people are not politicians. They don't know anything about politics. They just come into politics. Even the fact that they are credible, they have there is a structure on ground which they don't know anything about the structure. In terms of the protocols that should follow. Yes, of course. So now they need somebody to direct and redirect them on what to do, how to do it, and how to, you know, ensure that you win this election. So how are you going to make it? You are not a politician. You just jump into the system. Uh, but you are credible, actually. But how will you now, you know, incorporate into the system and match it? You need somebody. Somebody that has been there to work it out for you I'm, I'm not in any way subscribing for anybody trying to manipulate power to a kind of an embezzle or siphon the state resources. That is something quite different. But when you come to an organized system where you have a leader, that leader is there to protect the interests of the, uh, in the state, the interests of the people, the people who have been in the political arena. So that for now you can't do without it all unless we have a kind of over uh, a, a kind of overhaul system of the political uh, uh, you know uh, association in Nigeria. Then we'll begin to have that. But not even in the in the, in the US and other countries of the world. With those need, independent candidates. Yes. You, you you still need the support of some people. In order to get in there yes and it's not that those people have any it's just for that bad name godfatherism if you remove that godfatherism name then there are people that are acting based on the you know tendency of ensuring that good things come to their people more like an endorsement no just like that. Now, now, let's also look at it from the angle of the party. Within parties, which are the structures upon which candidates ride in elections to the emergence in elected political positions, there's still disgruntlement about this power sharing in terms of rotation. Mm. Now, some persons, owing to the backing of these endorsements, are preferred candidates of the party mm. when they might be more experienced, more competent persons who should have gone for that position mm. with the hope or promise that they will be somewhat rewarded with an appointment. And down the line, these promises have failed. Now we see persons jumping from one party to another or being accused of being anti-party when they choose to take up appointed positions under a different political party. This has also affected the case in some states where caretaker committees are still in place. We see a new governor put his own caretaker and try to oust some other person's caretaker. This circle continues. Uh, what do you care to say in resolving this part or so mm. within political structures that ought to be like you said the due process in which mm. candidates should follow respecting protocol that has actually been uh, the, the the area of uh, contention and uh, which need to be properly addressed and uh, uh, you have talked about uh, negotiation and um, uh, is a, a, you know a negotiation sometimes is to reach to a certain terms and conditions but at the end of the day sometimes when people get into power they do away with all those negotiations, negotiations. so that is where the the, the the problem are always arising yes but if due process due protocol will be followed i think it will go a long way to uh, solve uh, uh, such issues however uh, the issue of credibility in governance is something that must have to be taken in serious con uh, uh, cognizance. The, because it's when people are credible that, should be, they, that they should be able to deliver their mandate by rendering social services, social contracts, in ensuring that uh, good things get to the grassroots. Well, we're still talking about uh, credibility, Ambassador. I, I know we have been knocking the politicians themselves on the head, the governors, the chairmen, the godfathers, mm -hmm. but there's a particular set of people that we have not really touched on, and that is the electorates themselves. Mm -hmm. 
where somebody comes up from a particular uh, uh, section of the country and says, oh, I want to vie for a position. And everybody rallies around him. They vote for him at the polls. He wins the election. And somehow, these people, instead of waiting for the actual dividends of democracy that they voted for, they wait for monetary gains, immediate monetary gains from these public office holders who they have elected into power which in turn puts so much pressure on public office holders to sort of put their hands in corrupt or illicit activities from the pockets of the government. How do we address this on the part of the electorate? Um, just as uh, uh, the Honorable Barrister have uh, earlier said, the most integral aspect of politicking is to see that something good reaches the masses in the grassroots. And how do you ensure that? Is to see that people that want it comes to play. People that have the capacity to deliver comes to play. But sometimes some of these people that have the potentials they have the credibility, they have the willpower, they have the nationalistic aspiration to lead or to a kind of pilot that particular ministry or that particular arms of government yes. are not given the opportunity to do that. In spite of the fact that people know who is credible, you know the people that are credible uh, based on their precedence, what they have done before will determine whether they should be able to deliver or not going by their precedence. So, uh, in essence, that is where actually the system is falling. And, uh, it's a faulty system. Of course. It's very, very faulty. So, um, and you see, you also talk about uh, people shifting from one party to the other. Uh, that emanated as a result of uh, sometimes you see people uh, actually label for a party. They label for a particular candidate. They put in all their resources and make all sacrifices that is needed for them to, to, to make. And at the end of the day, you see different people even that are that are antagonizing the particular candidates or the party being put in places of, you know, power. So that has been angering politicians a lot. You see, some of the hitches we are having in political cycle emanated as a result of all this inability of the leaders to, you know, reward people adequately based on those based negotiations on their performances and, and negotiations and negotiations so this is in fact is something that uh, if there's a, a, a kind of equity display in uh, you know awarding you know politician based on their performances then i think it will go a long way to reduce such type of tussles so that is the way I look at it. Now, in the hope for the forthcoming local government elections, we're also seeing primaries coming by. We've seen some states also go to the poll. It's on allowing votes to count as well. Whilst we wait for the debate on the state electoral commissions or INEC at the federal level to conduct it, what's your word to electorates who will be looking to go to the ballots to choose credibility in times like this? They should avoid irregularities in politicking and they should go for the best go the, for the people that they know are going to deliver if you vote for people that are not going to deliver people who have selfish interests your resources will be embezzled and at the end of the day you have nothing but if you vote for credible leader those credible leaders are going to transform your state transform your local government transform your worth and transform the nation. Uh, we be actually believe in the policies and programs of His Excellency President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. And um, 
uh, we are actually aware of the you know hardship people have underwent and are uh, still uh, undergoing but uh is normally the process sometimes you fit you, you fit hard time in in the following the process of uh, your achievement but at the end what is the, the target at the end of the day there should be light and that uh, there's possible uh, 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 scenario and po uh, uh, positions and uh, his policies are imagined are evolving and those policies imagine are targeting the ordinary people you, you can see the declaration just of recent or yes. they today <clears throat> or yesterday regarding the military to uh, you know move to move Sokoto. to Sokoto yes in, uh, in order to counter the insecurity that is uh, bedeviling that section of uh, the country uh, you, you you can see so what does that implies it implies that government programs are evolving so uh, let us give all the necessary support that is needed to make this government achieve her renew hope agenda without any iota of trying to this uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, dismantle or uh, discredit the government of the day. Well, we must thank you, Ambassador Musa Mohammed Sokin, for your time on the program. This is as much as we can accommodate. We appreciate you.